Welcome to Tuesday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony Cowan, and thanks for joining us this Thanksgiving week as we refocus and reset our life to give God thanks all the time. Not just one day a week, not just one week a year, but all the time giving God thanks. And that means that we are acknowledging and recognizing all the good things that he's done for us in Jesus. Now, we've said a number of things yesterday and we won't go back and review those again, but you know, a lot of people really don't see the value or the purpose or the need for living a lifestyle of thanksgiving in their life. You know, they kind of think, well, that's just for those few religious people, those holier than thou, sanctimonious kind of people. Well, let me say this, that thanksgiving is not a religious ritual any more than Christianity is a religion. No, Christianity is a relationship with God Almighty through his son, Jesus. And because we're in a relationship with him, he is providing for us faithfully, and we return to give God thanks for what he's done in our life. So really, Thanksgiving is not a religious ritual. It's not just something religious. It is a relationship thing. You know, if somebody who loves you came and gave a gift to you, wouldn't you give them thanks? Wouldn't you say, well, at least thank you? You know, because you really didn't deserve or earn that. They did it just out of their goodness to you because of their relationship, of their love for you. And you know, really the least you can do and the best thing you could do, I should say, is to return and be grateful and give thanks to them. That's very important right there. But some people question in their own minds, well, why should I be giving God thanks? I mean, I worked hard for this. I worked hard for what I got. I'm smart. I did all this stuff. I, you know, went through school and I, I started this business and I did all this stuff and, and, you know, on and on and on. And they think, well, you know, I really deserve this. I, what I have in my life is my own hard work and earning. So why should I give God thanks for doing something in my life that I really did myself? Well, let me put it this way. Everything that you have in life and everything you do in life really is because God and his goodness and his grace are in your life. Really, you wouldn't be alive without God giving you life. And you couldn't do work hard if God didn't give you strength. And you couldn't be smart if God didn't give you knowledge and understanding about your field of expertise. And certainly you couldn't start a business without God giving you some kind of an opportunity. See, that's forgetting God. And that's what he's talking about in Deuteronomy chapter eight. And I don't have time to go over there and read that. I think it's, that's a good one to read right now it, this week, Deuteronomy chapter eight, because he said when he was given warning to the children of Israel, when they got into the promised land and they started enjoying all these good things and the fruit of their own labors that they just forget God. And he said in verse number 18, it is God who gives us the power to gain wealth so that his covenant can be established in the earth. So everything that we have, I know we work smart and we work hard and, and we, we take advantage of opportunities. We're certainly not promoting or advocating a lifestyle of laziness and just sitting around waiting for something to happen. But what I do want you to understand and acknowledge is even in your hard work, God was in that. Even in your business, when you start your business, God was in that giving you opportunities, giving you favor with certain people. And see, we need to understand and recognize that it, it was God that was giving us the power to, to, to gain wealth. It was God that was doing these things in our life. When you got through school, I know when I got through school, I was thanking God after every exam and every test because I knew God helped me with certain things. Even though you study, God's there helping you retain that knowledge and give you understanding and all those things. So if you, will, if you really understand the grace and the goodness of God, you will begin to give God thanks even in those things you think you deserved and earned on your own really you didn't. God was there all along. He was working maybe behind the scenes, working things out for you, giving you the strength, the ability, the knowledge, the understanding, all those things, the opportunities in order to make provision for you and your family. And that's really what this is all about this week. We are talking about 
acknowledging God in our life, uh, remembering what he's done in our life. Now I know it's kind of extreme, but second, um, I believe it's over in second Timothy. Yes. Yeah, second Timothy chapter three, verse one and two, it's, it talks about in the last days, there's going to be perilous times or times of great stress. Now, you know, we all, every generation thinks probably they're in the last generation, the last days, but looking around, it really tends to look that way. But regardless, we can look around in our day, in our generation, and see that there are times of great stress out there. Now it goes on in verse two and tells us why there's such times of great stress. It's because it says men will be lovers of themselves and not lovers of God. In other words, they have become more self-focused and self-centered in their life. And they have really forgotten God. Then it goes on down to say that one of those byproducts of being self-centered in their life, focusing on their self, was that they became unthankful, ungrateful. And I know, again, that's kind of extreme right there to a lot of us. But, you know, most of us grew up under a, a Christian influence anyway here in this country. But, you know, we still need to understand that the more a person, a family, a society, a nation becomes more focused on themselves, on what they can do to make their lives better, independent from God and away from God, the more ungrateful and unthankful they're going to become. Why? Because they're thinking they deserved all this in their life. But when you have a revelation of God's goodness, why he's good in our life, which is the grace of God in our life, then you begin to become more thankful. You, 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 you stop focusing on self, stop becoming self-centered and becoming more God-focused and God-centered. You know, I need God every day of my life. I, that's one thing I found out in my 50 plus years on this earth, that I need God in everything. I'm acknowledging him in all of my ways. You know, when, when I receive something from God, and I know I've, I've been like most folks and I've lost focus of this and I have to come back and say, wait a minute, I didn't give God thanks for answering that prayer. I didn't give God thanks for doing this in my life. Some things even I didn't ask for, God just did it because he's good to me. He loves me. And you know what? I need to return to give God thanks, even the small things, even the, the things that most people would take for granted. Man, we got to go back and we got to remember and acknowledge and give God thanks for all those things right there. Without the grace of God, we couldn't function. I mean, we wouldn't even be here. We wouldn't have the life. We wouldn't have a life here, here in the United States of America, the kind of freedoms we enjoy without the grace and the goodness of God working in our life. Now, I want to look at a few verses of scripture today just concerning the grace of God. Because the word thanksgiving in the Greek actually includes the Greek word charis, C-H-A-R-I-S, which is always translated grace. So you can't, you can't really separate thanksgiving, giving God thanks from grace. You can't separate the grace of God received in our life from giving God thanks. And really everything that we have from God, everything that, that we are and everything that we enjoy here in this life as a believer is because of the grace of God. We didn't earn or deserve any of it. We didn't, we didn't get up enough merit points to deserve something good from God. Everything was given to us freely by his grace in Christ Jesus. We couldn't do it ourselves. We couldn't provide these things for ourselves. So God, in his goodness, in his graciousness, provided these things for us. And that is why we, when we receive free gifts because of God's grace, and that's, again, the only way you're going to receive from God is through his grace, it, then we are to return to give God thanks in our life. The more people really understand this grace issue, this grace concept, the grace of God in their life, the more thankful they're going to be. Now, we're all familiar with scriptures found in Ephesians chapter 2, but let me just read this real quick. Verse number 7, it says, And in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of, of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Notice that God didn't give us just a little bit of grace. He gave us exceeding riches of his grace. So much so, it's going to take all the ages to come to demonstrate and show us how great and unlimited 
this great grace is in his kindness and goodness of heart toward us in Christ Jesus. Verse eight says, for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Notice that we didn't earn our salvation. We didn't earn any part of our salvation. Not one, one iota of our salvation. It was all included and provided for us free of charge through the grace of God that's available in Christ Jesus. And then in verse nine, most people know this, not of works lest anyone should boast. See, boasting is not being thankful. It's taking glory to myself and say, well, I earned this. I deserve this. Why should I need to pat myself on the back? Why should I return to give God thanks? But when you know he is the originator of all things, when you become God-centered, when you understand this concept of grace and begin to receive freely the things that are available in Christ Jesus, then I can tell you, you're gonna be the most thankful people in all the world. You'll see the purpose and the value for giving God thanks. You are responding to God's relationship of grace in our life. Now real quickly over in Romans chapter five. Romans chapter five, so many, so many good things in Romans chapter five. But notice in uh, verse number six of Romans chapter five, it says, for when we were still without strength, the Amplified says we were powerless to help ourselves. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. You know, when Jesus came, we were all the ungodly. We were sinners, we were undeserving of it. When we deserved it the least and needed it the most, God sent Jesus, the son whom he loved and valued more than anything else, to die on the cross, take our place and die on the cross for us, for our salvation. And you know what? That was out of the unconditional love of God. I tell you, if you had nothing else you could think of right now to give God thanks for, that would be it right there. But I'm, I'm sure that that would only be, you know, the, the first thing that, and the, probably the most important thing that you would give God thanks in your life. You see that everything that you have in life that you enjoy is because of God's unconditional love, goodness, and grace working in our life. And then in verse number 15, it says, but the free gift... See, there's a free gift involved. When somebody gives you a gift, what do you do? Again, you return, you, you're grateful, you give them thanks. It says, but the free gift is not like the offense, for if by the one man's offense many died much more, this is what I like right here, much more, uh, the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. What that's telling us right there is no matter what came bad in because of the fall of man, what we experience as mankind because of the fall of man, the grace of God was much greater. And you know what? Because God is abounding toward us continually in his grace and goodness of heart toward us in Christ because of his unconditional love, therefore we should continually offer up thanksgiving to him, thanking him for having a good day, thanking him for his blessings, for his provision, for his faithfulness, all these things. We have so much to give God thanks for because he has been gracious and good to us. Well, that's all the time I've got for today. Join us again tomorrow as we go through this in Thanksgiving week. If you'd like additional resources and materials, go to TonyCowan.org. We'll see you tomorrow.